Welcome back to the Be Shine Podcast. Once again, we have I Am Many. What up, what up? We have myself, Brian. And uh, we are here in Atlantic City tonight. Yes, sir. As you can see from the very nice background, uh, we got a nice room out here. And so uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we didn't. We don't have a room. That sounds like we're sleeping together. In the- <laughs> <laughs> For the podcast, we have the room. So, yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, that's how you're liking the Borgata. I mean, you haven't seen much of it, but... I've been to the Borgata like countless times ever since it opened. It had to be like 15, 16, 17 years ago it's opened, and I've been here so many times. I even used to work over at Caesars. Right. Um, I remember when this was the newest casino, but I've never been up to the like room floors or stayed here because it was always like $300, $400 a night. So <laughs> it is. It's yeah. still to this day. Like like yesterday, they it was 500 and. Forty dollars they wanted to charge for a room. I don't pay for this shit, so I'm like, nah, I didn't. So I stood at Caesars last night. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been five hundred on a Sunday, nonetheless. New Year's they wanted, and it was like a thousand and forty. That's the rooms. Wild. Yeah, but this is it's very nice. It's what I would expect it to be. Mm-hmm. What I would have expected. So but this is a suite though. So this would probably be even more. Than that, like a regular. Oh yeah, way more is, seven to a, a thousand. Yeah, you know that's what they do. Which I mean, I don't know any real gamblers not spending a bunch of time in the room anyway. I mean, what does it truly matter? Yeah, it's cool, but I like it. I like it out here. Um, we got a cool view of AC, but it's dark out now, so you can't see it. But yeah, we're here, man. Yes, sir. So how's your week? Or actually, New Year's. How has your you know last couple of weeks been? good i mean i was i was out here um and yeah i just you know i just i did what i what i like to do i you know and uh but you 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 came back from a trip yeah i actually had two trips around thanksgiving i did nine days in brazil in rio de janeiro then i was back here for three weeks and then uh went out to asia to spend two weeks in thailand in uh, both phuket and then bangkok and um, the first week back was a lot of um, recovering from the time zone. I was sleeping at 6 p.m., waking up at 3 a.m., mm-hmm. and I was just up wow. doing stuff. But wow, both places were incredible. I would just, you know, Thailand was more recent, so the food is amazing. It's even better than Bangkok, I would say, is even better than New York for the fact that um, the city that never sleeps. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's more options to do things and to have, have good food mm-hmm. in Bangkok than there is in New York. Because Bangkok, 5 a.m., 4 or 5 a.m., just go outside, get some food. It's like normal. Yeah. Like normal night hour. So I love it. I love it in Bangkok. Um, there's so much to do. There's um, the nightlife is insane. Mm. I went with one of my friends from California and we had gone to a couple different spots before in like Colombia and uh, he's been to other countries. He was in like Portugal and Spain and everything. And I was like, come with me to Thailand for a week. He came, yeah. he was like, this is the wildest city I've ever been to. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really wild. Um, fucking and um, Thailand this year, or, I'm sorry, the beginning of, t- or no, summer of 2022, Thailand legalized or decriminalized weed. Okay. And every block or every two blocks, you can buy weed. Mm. Just like you buy a pack of gum. Mm. You walk up to the spot, I want to get this. Pre-rolls were like $3, $4, something like that. Yeah. So I just get like a pre-roll and I'd be good for like, you know, a couple days on that because I I don't smoke that much. But, you know, to add on top of the nightlife, now you can just smoke. (laughs) It It was wild. Do you guys pull anything? I mean, every time you walk out onto the street, there's opportunity. Yeah. It's just a matter of do you feel like it or not. Just like that. Yeah. But that's the stuff you got to pay for. Or is it just in general? like? Um, so I'm, I'm hes- hesitant to say because it depends. Mm. Because there could be girls that are like freelancers, they call them. But if they like you, Mm. they're not going to charge you, right? Like Mm. if you can say, hey, you meet them at, you know, one of these bars and then you say, hey, you know, you're having fun with them and say, hey, let's go get something to eat, this and that. It depends on the girl. 
you know, some of them really need money, so they'll do that. But um, some of them, if they like you, they'll just hang out with you. Mm. But you can also find, like, normal girls, um, like non-working girls, you know, in the mall or on uh, Tinder or something like that. Where do I find the girls that want, that want money for it? An AC. <laughs> Pacific Avenue. <laughs> but the problem, with, the problem with U.S. is the girls in AC or in America, mm -hmm. you're going to be paying three, four, five hundred dollars. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, Which I wouldn't do. It's just, you know, it's funny. In the U.S., you're better off going to like a massage parlor, yeah, oriental massage parlor mm -hmm. that helps you out. But um, in Thailand, it's anywhere between thirty bucks to sixty bucks. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like, and what is it to buy a house out there? Oh, I don't know the prices. Um, it's cheap. It's cheap in Thailand. I wonder if you could do an Airbnb, like like. Buy a place in the near Airbnb it yeah, out. for tourists. I mean, do your research because I don't know how oh, much of it's already. Probably not, though, right? Because why would you pay that American price when you're staying for super duper cheap in nice places? I stayed at a pretty nice hotel. It was the Ibis Styles, I think it's called. Yeah. 40 bucks a night. Yeah. So why would you deal with. Right. Okay. Yeah. It could make sense in a certain, in a certain situation, but. Yeah, and then I would go to these markets. I bought the, um, what do they have? Those, those Yeezys that go for like $200. Mm -hmm. They're like the knitted ones. Mm -hmm. I got them. I got like the knockoffs for 30 bucks. Okay. And they look the same, so I don't care. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I was buying these fun. basketball jerseys. They had like some Mitchell and S ones. Um, they were going for like 12 bucks. I bought like 10 of them. Okay. Those are official or no? Yeah, the, the Mitchell okay. and S are. But they had some some other that are clear knockoffs. I still bought them for like ten bucks. I was buying T-shirts for like three dollars, four dollars, all all like souvenir shirts. People were making leather, like leather um, keychain stuff, leather like small little leather bag holsters. I would buy that stuff for like six bucks. Mm. It's crazy. Everything like super super cheap. You can get, you can spend a lot of money. In Thailand, but that's if you're going to, like, um, the malls and you buy commercial stuff. Like, they have a Nike store in their mall. They have Adidas and that kind of stuff. You're going to pay probably more than you'd pay here because the import tax. Okay. So you got to you got to buy food, like, on the street, some of the local restaurants. If you go to the nicer spots, you could pay, you know, $20, $30 for your meal. Mm. But you go on the street, you could pay a dollar for your meal. So you just have to know, like, right. be smart about it. Um, and, you know, the people there, the locals, they're absolutely fine. And they even prefer, like, the street stuff because it's just more, like, mm -hmm. authentic. Yeah. Um, so if you're just smart about that and you know, you know, if, you're, if it's your first time, you might not realize and you end up paying, you know, at some of these nicer expensive spots. But, yeah, if you know what you're doing, you know how to get around on the subway, you, you know, like a dollar fifty to get to the other side of town. Like, yeah, you could kill it out there. Yeah, it's dope. That's fun. Go out there with like fifty G's, live like a fucking kingpin. Thirty dollars for sex. Like, I spend thirty dollars on like, fuck, dude. Spend thirty bucks just like a few trips to Seven Eleven. Quest cookie, little energy drink. Come back later. Pop chips. <laughs> 30 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, it's like $10 each time you stop. Yeah. You know, if you do it, you know, like gas, like, forget it. Like, what, you, what you're going to be doing that? What, what's the car situation like? What kind of cars are you seeing on their roads? There's normal cars. You can see like a Mercedes. Okay. Um, normal stuff. I wonder if they're cheaper out there. Probably not though, right? Same deal, it's imported. Yeah, I never looked into the prices. But it's and just, even if you got it from che for cheaper, you'd have to get it here. So you're not, there's mm -hmm. no saving there, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. There's there's a, a YouTuber uh, named King Epic. Mm. He does 
tons of videos on um, Thailand and Thai girls and what to expect and how to know if um, uh, a Thai girl is really into you or not or just mm -hmm. wants money. And he also did a video on what you're asking, what can you do with the $50,000 budget? <laughs> yeah. So he kind yeah. of, you know, talks about that. You can blow it real fast if you're not smart about it, but it can go a long way. Mm. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I mean, I was happy to come home because it's just like everything you know. Yeah. You have like normal like gyms and social things that, um, you know, we're, we're used to. The social life is it's just different out there. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, of um, course. But to, for me, it's great to just like get away, disconnect completely and just be in a whole whole new place mm -hmm. so yeah man I, I had a great time i had a gopro with me so i was filming a lot of my adventures just walking around so there's going to be a lot of visuals of just the people and things like that but that's on a, on a different channel i post that so mm -hmm. i made made use of uh my travels while I was out there they have night markets too so um it, what we would see as like a maybe like a bazaar where it's just night in like a huge parking lot. It's just shop, shop, shops, hundreds of them, like mm. literally hundreds. And then they have food stands, a whole section of food. And it's just, it's amazing. You're just there walking around buying yeah. shit. Um, and then there's this weekend market called Chatuchak Market where they have 10,000 shops. Mm -hmm. And it's the biggest market in, um, I don't know, the world or at least Thailand the biggest weekend market they have you can you can walk around the whole day yeah and like crazy dope very dope yeah man I was, so if you can get out there anyone can get out there to thailand i'd highly recommend it. it doesn't even matter what city um it's amazing one of the topics you wanted to talk about speaking of things coming from overseas you were mentioning uh that fentanyl is 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 made in china and then shipped to the us yeah. So there's numerous reports. If anyone wants to look online, um, fentanyl, there are um, manufacturing plants in China that are making fentanyl. They're, they're Legally? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, they are sending it through Mexico and Canada, um, and they're getting okay. it. And, and so off. even India, yeah, I think India is making it too. So it's a combination of like India. Might be illegal in India. <laughs> India, Mexico, and um, China are pushing this into the U.S. The DEA website, DEA.gov, fentanyl flow of the United States. So there's actually like a map that they show with the flow of how, of where it comes from. And it shows China and India mainly. Both of them send it to Mexico um, China sends it to uh, Canada as well. A couple facts are saying fentanyls in powder form as well as unregistered pill presses, stamps, and dyes are shipped via mail services. Um, that's from China and India. The powder fentanyls are processed and mixed with heroin, sold as heroin, or pressed into pills and sold in the Canadian drug market. Some fentanyl products are smuggled from Canada into the United States for sale on a smaller scale. There's no more doing drugs anymore. As far as I'm concerned, like pills, mm. like you can't do pills anymore on the black market, right? If you're going to get, if you need painkillers or uh, what is that, opioids, mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to get it from a doctor. There's no more going to Mexico and getting it from someone over there. Why? I don't get it. You're saying that because of this now, there's going to be a major crackdown? No, I'm saying because of this now. I don't know if this is 2021 or 2022, but there were 93,000 overdose, overdose deaths reported. Just reported. So there's more than that overdose. Mm -hmm. So that's more than uh, what's well, the equivalent to the amount of people that died in the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Korean War, 36,000 people died. Vietnam War, almost 60,000 people died. That's just one year in the mm -hmm. U.S. So what I'm saying is 
there's no more doing drugs because perfect example, Mac Miller. He called his connect to get him something. Was laced with fentanyl. Mm. That's it. So you're saying most of the drugs are going to have the fentanyl in it? I'm saying you don't know what's laced with fentanyl. Okay. The the facts that I read off that said they're mixed with heroin and they're sold as heroin. Mm. Yeah, heroin I know that it, yes. No, but they're but if you're mixing fentanyl in the heroin mm -hmm. and it's the pill and they say these are the these are heroin pills. Any pills on the black market mm -hmm. might be laced with fentanyl. Okay. So if you are not getting pills from a doctor, yeah, you could overdose and die. And uh, the ones that you're going to get over the counter from the doctor, not over the counter, but the, even the prescription ones are problematic enough. To get you hooked. Yeah. Right. And then it's cheaper on the black market. Yeah. It's expensive, right? So basically, like, when the doctor prescribes it, you're getting it for free. So, when, so then when it, when it comes to the black market, you're talking $30, $35 a pill. So what happens is, is um, they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So they, they move to heroin, which is like $5 a bag. The pills ruin people's lives. People start stealing. They lose their jobs. Because it's, it's a very expensive habit. And it, it, they stop having this, the effect they're supposed to have. They steal because they... They feel like they're dying in the withdrawal. They need the money for them. Yes. They, that's like the most number one priority to get that next hit to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. So why is the media and, and, and people not talking about how this is chemical warfare, biological warfare, China, between the pandemic and fentanyl? I mean— it's it's worse than it's worse than throwing bombs, right? They're killing mm -hmm. us, and now they got us on TikTok influencing us. Mm -hmm. It's like what you know? What do we do that's not influenced by them at this point? So we're not talking about that. We're not saying my friend overdosed, and it's because China's sending China's creating this and sending it to us, mm -hmm. and they're making it easy on social media to buy it too. Well, that's why my question is, is it being created legally over there? Or is it, you know what I'm saying? Some illegal shit that's going down and then they get it over here. If it's legal, I doubt it's legal. What they did with the Wuhan labs, okay. I don't think that would be considered quote unquote legal. So you, you know, mean, whatever the government does. You mean does, like the government is, is probably okay with it. They're just like on some behind the scenes type shit. They don't need a reason to follow a, a legality right, to right. do what they're trying to accomplished, which is really control and be number one in power. Right. So I just think that there needs to be more discussion. There needs to be more um, activism against those countries that we're talking about. It's literally killing us. It's taking control over us uh, in the social media thing and in destroying our youth by making them spend all their time on stupid things that's not going to help them in the future or help anyone in the future. I mean, let's get people off drugs, but mm. let's really create the narrative um, about what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would be curious to know uh, how it's going down. You know, like I said, if it, if it is government involvement, if it's more just like some Chinese mafia type shit, which is pretty, like, is pretty curious because I, I, I'm like just kind of curious as to how the crime functions in China. I mean, you got a government that, is so ruthless, you know what I'm saying? That it's 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 a wonder that there's even like organized crime out there. I don't even know how to be organized crime without without it being sanctioned by the government because they don't fuck around. Like they snatched up a billionaire. Um, his name was Jack Ma, I think. He owned. Was it? It wasn't Ali. It might have been Alibaba that he owned. He was like the Jeff Bezos of China. Okay, and he just goes missing. <laughs> like they don't, like they, they don't, they don't play. They don't care. They don't, they don't, it's not like, I mean, America doesn't care either, but we're, we try to, like they, I, they, I don't think they give a fuck, like of trying to cover their shit up. Like Epstein. America you know, at least like puts we all, on a show that they care. Yeah. Yeah. Like we all know, like, you know, with, with, with the Epstein thing, but it's same, any, not only Epstein, um, John McAfee. McAfee 2, that airplane to Malaysia that disappeared, mm -hmm. like a whole airplane with hundreds of people just 
disappeared. They couldn't find it. Crazy. <laughs> Man, it's mad shit that goes down, and America just has a way of, I don't know. They find what, like, but other countries like Russia or China, they're just more iron-fisted and just like, fuck you. Go fuck what you think. Yeah. I mean, if you take it back to the le- the level of the conquerors, and, you know, that's kind of how we originated as conquerors and as, you know, just nature of, of being mammals, it's no surprise that this is the level of activity, but we've been kind of uh, taught that there's morality and there's like good conscience and karma and things are going to be fair and the, the legal process is, is going to be right. just and all right. that stuff. And we're just so um, minute in this world that like, it's still that old mentality. Sure. So we're like, oh my God, how could they do this? How could they? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You'd expect that. So yeah, that's all I was saying. That that was that was just my whole point. Is like, the narrative is not about where it's coming from and what we need to do to stop that. And and really, the big picture about how much we've been we're being infiltrated and and destroyed. I wouldn't even say slowly. I'd say I'm quickly. Sure. I'm sure Trump would make it a topic. Trump, possibly DeSantis. I don't know if Biden will ever fucking. And we're so tied in with buying everything from them for mm-hmm. so cheap, like the whole the WalMarts and things like that. That we we do need to get away from that. So that whole like American made thing is resonating a little bit stronger with me. Mm. <laughs> just for that, yeah. Um, but we're just so tied in, and we're being, you know, destroyed at the same time. Mm-hmm. When we're like maybe their number one customer. I've been watching lately a lot of uh, content surrounding relationships mm. and um, a lot of the stuff in the, the manosphere. And I made a post uh, about it on my, my IG um, where, where, where I was saying is that we're, what you're seeing is like extremes giving birth to other extremes. And I think that I find myself always where with, with, with an unpopular opinion. Because I truly do feel that when, like, when everybody's, I, I kind of see things, like, I catch on a little, like, by the time, and I'm not, it's not even like I'm a tuning my horn type thing, but it's just like, by the time everybody else is agreeing with me, like, I'm on to the next fucking thing. So it's like, what's spreading now? I was feeling this way when feminism was at its peak. Mm. So now you're seeing the the opposite, the opposing voice that that extreme feminism gave birth to. And now I'm here on an island, like recognizing the flaws within this extremity that, that is like the answer to feminism. Um, it seems to be this idea that the man can do no harm. And it seems to also be um, this thing of, it almost seems like 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 a thing of women being like second class citizens in a sense where it's just like you can you have to preserve your body and I understand the reasoning behind it. I understand that the consequences for having sex for a female are more severe than they are for a man. I understand these things. Um however, some double standards I think are obviously just I don't know the word, but but uh, give you an example. A woman can have sex with like 30 guys and her value diminishes. Right. The man can have sex with 30 women. His value increases. Right. If the woman is considered dirty for doing that, the woman you're sleeping with, if you're sleeping with a bunch of women, it's those women. So you you would have to explain to me how you roll around in the mud and you don't get dirty. So the difference um, and what they talk about is it's having sex versus being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So a girl who's a whore or a slut, whatever, however you want to call it, they can, they're not absolved from these high value men having sex with them. They're just uh, the, the higher body count that they have, the less likely they are to, be picked to be in a relationship, to be picked to be the one, the main, the main girl. From the, from the quote unquote high value man. Correct. And I, and I, and I, I see these, some of these high value men, I mean, at least, you know, Tate is part 
self-righteous, narcissistic psychopaths. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, um, everything seems to be some kind of game of leverage. So there is no real relationship. It seems more to be like an understanding. And that understanding is, I'm buying your cooperation and your tolerance, right? And we talked about this earlier on where it's just like, I'm providing you this, 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 and this. So for that reason, you will accept these conditions in these circumstances. If you don't like that, then you no longer get this, this, and this. To me, that sounds like more of an arrangement than it is a relationship. Now, I suppose you can make the argument that relationships are, we have a bad idea of what a relationship is. That's another thing. So I've been watching a lot of Kevin Samuels. So it's like, you can make that argument where it's just like you think a relationship's about falling in love. Uh, a relationship is, the whole purpose of a relationship is to meet somebody to start a family with. So if you're looking at it like you're getting on a road to lead to a certain destination, okay, fine. But what if you're not trying to start a family with somebody? So what, what are we doing? We're just making arrangements here. I have all of the money, so I get to do what I want. You stay home. You do as I say. You can't do the things that I do because you're a woman and I'm a man. It just seems to me that extremes are giving birth to extremes. And I'm recognizing the flaws in them. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that, I don't know. To me, it's just like everybody's, like I keep hearing this talk. Oh, the, 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 the older man who, who has a lot of money, he wants the girl in his 20s. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if you don't want anything of meaning and substance, I mean, like what, how, what kind of conversation are you going to have with a 20 year old girl? So automatically you're not, you're the, the, the role of, of, of women in their minds is not as like their equals. And some of them will go as far as to say, oh, men and women are not equal. I think it's a little bit more complicated than that because the dating market is so messed up mm -hmm. and it's so messed up because social media allows uh, good looking women to connect with men and get flown out to places, mm -hmm. right? Get flown out on a yacht. Mm -hmm. They're 18 years old and they're just born with their beauty or mm -hmm. born with their value, which mm -hmm. is the beauty. And men have to work so hard to get to a level of value. They have to earn their value. They have to work for it. It takes a long time to make six figures. It takes a long time to get a, a good physique. Mm -hmm. um, you, have to ha you have to be funny, charismatic, like all these things. And so what's happening is, what did they say? 33% of men in the past year, like, did not have sex at all. What's happening is the women are 80%, I think it's 80% of the women are going after the top 10% of the men. We're equating value. So uh, uh, two points. Um, and I, you know, keep with, come, like the pushback is good. Two things, we're, we're equating value to desire and, 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 and attraction, and which, which ultimately I think becomes leverage. I, there's a lot of leverage going on. Um, I think we need to reevaluate what we value and look more to it's because we're bereft of actual values, right? Everything is, I want that, right? I want that, that because we're, here's the, here's the girl. She's flaunting her quote unquote value. But what we're, we're calling value is really her ability to attract men sexually. Is that true value? Right? So, so you have that. And then what we're equating value as for a man is his ability to generate money or his ability to build a, a, a body or a physique. You could make an argument that the physique could be considered value. It serves a purpose, could help you. It's functional. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever. I don't want to get too philosophical or whatever, but we're, we're, we're ultimately... That's what we're doing. We're taking things that make people attractive and we're going, oh, they're valuable. But it's like, 
this is this is all very surface flimsy shit. I mean, like when it really comes down to it, and this is why I like the Kevin Samuels message. These people, and this is my perspective, these people deserve each other. The 18-year-old whore and the narcissistic psychopath are a perfect match made in hell. That has a lot of money? Yeah. You are looking to use a man. You are looking to take your shit to use a woman. You deserve each other. Okay? Kevin Samuels brings it into perspective where he, he, he states those things. He's like, the guy with the money wants that because, you know, he wants to have his way. He's used to having his way. You know, especially you add looks to the equation. I mean, I've heard Tate talk and, I, and, and the more that I got into him, it's like I've always liked guys who are confident that, put, that are off-putting to other people. I liked Trump. I liked Connor. I liked Tate. People yeah. hate these motherfuckers. They do. But I, I've always liked that outspoken. I'll, I'll end my point here. Um, but the more I've watched some of these people, the more I'm like, yo, you are, you're over the top in love and like obsessed with yourself. It's ridiculous. And I think that, what, well, someone like Tate, even, oh, okay. even somebody like Trump, who I've fucking, I, I stuck up for Trump. I was arguing with people on Facebook. I, fucking people used to do designs for me. Like they didn't like, wouldn't take jobs from me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, but my, my, my thing is, you know, you see these people for, 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 for where you see, it's just like, yo, you are self, you are self fucking absorbed. And, and, and I think we need to value people who aren't like, everything is me, me, me. I'm so great. And I deserve this. And I want more and more and more and more. That's where we're fucked up. I think the lines are being blurred between, what the message of like Tate and Kevin Samuels and some of them, because they're take talking about high value men, which are like the 1% and the message is spread across, I don't know, the world and it's being, and then you have like average guys adopting these values and it doesn't work for the average guy. It mm-hmm. only works for um, these people with a, a lot of money. But what you see on Kevin Samuels is most of the women that he speaks to um, are not these 18-year-old good-looking mm-hmm. girls. Yes. Right. They're women that are in their 30s and 40s mm-hmm. that have kids, that have size 8 dress, yeah. that want a man that looks good and makes six figures. They want the Tate. Yes. Yep. And what Kevin Samuels tells every single one of them is, why would a guy that has options like that Pick you. You're overweight. Mm-hmm. You you think you're a nine when you're really like a four. Six. Yeah, four, five, six, and and you have kids, and, and you have you know baggage and and things like that. So high value men have options. So what? So an average guy might be interested in this kind of woman yeah, it, to have a relationship. Yeah, and mm-hmm. but they don't they don't see the average guy. They only have their eyes on a type of guy that either doesn't even exist with all the qualities that they want in a man. And then they say, you know, there's no good men out there. Men ain't shit. See, I, I think, yeah, no, nah, nah, I, yeah. But he does an amazing job of putting it all into perspective. Like what he really does is he takes your situation and he just breaks it down. Like, just like, like a math problem where he's just like, look, you're, you're this age. Like, this, so it, and he makes sense out of it, and, and it's a good thing because I think that we need to stop valuing these people. I think we need to start, you know, me coming out of a relationship myself, realize that I have a lot of traits of these people where it's just like we, we think that we are so fucking special. And it's, it's, it's good. Like there's, there's, you get confidence from it. Like that there's some good to it, but you, you, it makes you a very self-serving person. It makes you very selfish. It, it doesn't bring you to be the best version of yourself. Um, and I think that women, what was the girl's name? Oh man, this fucking blue Jasmine. 
Blue Jasmine, she's talking to Kevin Samuels. And it was so it was hilarious. She's he's singing, would you mind if the man has more than one woman? She doesn't mind about that. You know what would hit her emotionally? Well, what if he's spending money on the other woman? Then the emo- then you started to see her get affected. Well, I mean, not how much money. Well, I mean, it can't be more than he's spending on me. And I was like, this is the most disgusting shit that I've ever fucking seen in my life. This is disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, she's essentially saying, I'm for se- like You're not going to have any meaning. Mm-hmm. The meaning doesn't come from that. All right, let me ask you this question because this is, I think this is a part of what you're getting at with uh, the whole value thing. They ask the women like what they want from a man, what attracts them from a man. And then the men also talk about what they want from a woman and attracts them from a woman. Mm -hmm. And so the men usually say that they just, they want, or they say high value men want a woman that is agreeable, Mm -hmm. pleasant, Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't make their life uh, hard, doesn't argue or yell. Like, very, very basic things. Mm-hmm. And then they ask the women what they want. And they're like, <laughs> I want a guy that has, you know, he makes at least $150,000. He, he's got to be six feet tall. He's got to be this and that, you know. So how, yeah. how does, um, when you say we need to stop valuing these things, how do you put it into perspective what people are saying that they want from The opposite gender. Here's the thing. I think that people say they want a lot of things. When it comes down to their actions, their actions show that they don't want those things. There are women out there that want those things. Say what you will about Blue Ivy, uh, Jasmine. She's one of them. She's about it. She's not fucking around. She's like, I need my body to look like this. I'm going to be in these spots. I'm going to be, she's the real thing. These women are not her. These women, it's like, it's like, like most guys hanging out can be like, nah, I want, I want the McLaren or no, I, I want the fucking Bugatti. Nah, that ain't my car. I'm, I'm rocking the Ferrari. I'm, a, it's like, yeah. Okay. But then there's the guy there. Well, he's not there. Then there's the guy who's working 80 hours who really wants the fucking thing. So I, I think that these women say this, but I don't believe that they're like holding out for that. And I could be wrong. Um, and if they are, you know, then he, I, I think that it's a real shame Kevin died because he was doing some amazing work. I've overheard conversations. It was actually, it was a black couple. And the way this girl was talking to this dude, like it was two, two occasions actually. Um, and I'm saying to myself, you know, mind you, like I'm listening to all of this Kevin Samuel shit. And I'm just like, I'm like, I would like get this fucking short fucking pudgy bitch why are you listening to this shit like what the fuck like it just blows my fucking mind like and 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 i've been in 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 relationships with women who can well was one relationship that that have that capacity to 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 be that that alpha female male aggression type shit but all it did was bring out the fucking ugliness in me. So now you have like this fucking, this thing, which is, is not good. These guys, they're just like, they fall back and they're, just, they're putting up with it and they're walking on these eggshells. And I'm saying to myself, like, this bitch ain't no catch. This bitch is whack. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, it's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know, when you hear me talk, like, I'm I'm far from a motherfucking simp. You know what I'm saying? I'm far from a fucking beta male. You know what I'm saying? But I'm somebody that has come from both sides. And I'm somebody who relates to a lot of these traits and these attributes that these quote unquote high value men exhibit, almost arrogant conceitedness like. And I can tell you that it's, you know, we we, we call it self-serving, but you're not serving yourself. Like, you, you get to give the reward is within giving. And, and, and when you're, we, we, you know, when you, we talk about operating in scarcity, 
that's what self-service comes from. You feel that you have to serve because there's not enough to give. I think that the more, the more giving you are and the more self-sacrificing you are, I think that's where you're going to tr- find true happiness. And I think that that's where true value lies. And if you, if you take a man and a woman who are both functioning in that capacity, I think you're going to have something amazing. But if you take the whore and you take the narcissist, I don't know. I mean, you, you'll have something that works, but I mean, what's the goal here? I, I don't know. Like, if the goal is just to live on this surface level, I show up to the restaurant with the hot chick that everybody stares at. I've done it. I know what it feels like, you know? Um, if that's just, if these are the things that are important to you, then no, you know, so be it, you know? But I, I just think that, I just think it's, 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 it's problematic that we value that. It just seems like, like the battle of users. And that's what's going on in these conversations. The girl who wants to use the man for the money, the man who wants to use the girl for the sex, but yet condemn the girl for having sex. I never understood that. I never understood that. It's like you want to fuck, you want to fuck women, but you, you want to look down on women that fuck. How does that work? I never looked down on, on women that wanted to fuck because I wanted to bang them. No, again, I don't think it, I don't think they're, I, I think they'll still get fucked. It, they just won't get the relationship with the high value man. But I suppose. But your point is still valid. I agree with you that it's, um, there, there's so many, there's so many women that just project this image of like living this lavish lifestyle. Mm-hmm. If you look on any social media platform, mostly it's Instagram I see right now, or even on the dating apps, it's like all their photos of they're on a beach, they're on a yacht, they're, you know, they're in, a, 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 they're at the Eiffel Tower in France. It's like every single one of these photos and it's like. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. This is bullshit. Like, it's just like, I, I've been around the world myself. It's just like, like, this is all like fleeting fucking moments. Like this shit is empty. You know what? I, there's this guy. It's called the Black Alien Project. You familiar with this? No. <laughs> Wait until you look this up. He has mutilated himself to resemble an alien. The ears are cut off, like the nose is cut, the fingers are cut into three. Uh, I think there's horns in the head, his tattoos all over the place. The mouth is cut and he's talking in weird sounds. And I say to myself, what happens when there's no one around to see you? Now what? I like attention. Motivates me to be in shape. When I used the gym in Caesars, there was nobody there. I almost was like, fuck, I don't know if I want to stay here. It's like, there's nobody here. But working out is something that you, once you get into it, you're in your own world anyway. So it's like, you'll do it even if no one's around. You wouldn't do those things if there was nobody to view you. Mm. So now the question becomes, if, if, if all of these things are, would you be with this person? And would you be doing these things if there was nobody else around to acknowledge it? Attention. Yeah, like what would fashion be like? You'll do it once or twice. You'll do it once or twice. I've done jet skis before. After a while, you don't want to get on the jet ski. It loses its appeal. It's the same with a theme park. It's the same with all thrills. This is why rich people, like, like poor people, are like, oh, if I had his money, I would be on an island all day. And I wouldn't be, like, you don't get it. Like, it's not what you think. That's going to get boring. It becomes normal. And this is where, you, you're, you know, you're, you're going to have to turn to something deeper, you know, perhaps a religion, perhaps God. This is why, because when you exhaust all of the, the thrills that this place has to offer, you realize it's all fleeting bullshit and it's empty and it's not going to bring you real fulfillment. So when you remove the eyes, would you still be doing these things? Would you keep this bitch around who only wants you for your money? And would you deal with this fucking asshole because of his money? I don't see these conversations. What I see is extremes giving birth to other extremes, 
both parties losing sight of of a middle ground and what what really matters. I think like there's elements of truth in both where it's just like, yeah, you could have some kind of, uh, the woman should want to stay home. You know what I'm saying? And take care of the kids and all of this stuff. That's good. Guess what, buddy? Mm -hmm. You're also supposed to be the fucking, your role is something similar to that pal it ain't about while your wife is doing that you're off on a fucking party in a boat with 30 women like that's you can't preach like that the woman is supposed to be this wholesome thing and think that these standards don't apply to you and what in, in any way whatsoever ever you know so i i just see that there's a lot of like i see a lot of flaws in some of some of this red pill talk yeah i don't disagree with anything that you're saying as you're talking, I'm thinking about how this these topics and conversations can kind of be like clickbait tabloids, whereas mm -hmm. if you do tackle some of these middle ground issues, mm -hmm. like let's say, you know, oh, I'm in a relationship with a woman and, you know, we respect each other and it's a real partnership, but sometimes she likes to go to these, you know, pumpkin uh, picking, uh, you know, uh, events, and it's not really what I like. So let's talk about how we can find more common ground or do the things that both of us like. Nobody would want to hear about that shit. Mm. <laughs> so really these conversations are polarized because the extreme is what is going to entice people. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate and that we have to have all these engaging, you know, thumbnails and, and, and titles and extreme kind of like attention grabbing things. And I, I think that's, a result of it too. I just feel that they're adopting it. Yeah, of course. And I agree. I, but it seems to me that they're adopting this shit as a philosophy and they're pushing this. And it's, it's, it's this, it's just, this is narcissism. It's narcissism. I fear for you if you're walking down that road and you're not, and you just continuously want more and more and more and more. You know, I, I understand like, I stay at the Bogato because it's nice. We like nice things. Um, but I know what it's like to be in, 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 a, in, a, in a nice room and feel horrible. We need to feed the soul. You know, you need to feed the soul. That's, you know, that's, just, that's my take. And I'm not hearing any of that. I'm hearing value as this type of shit. I want your money. I want your <laughs> pussy. So do you have a theory on where the fix comes first, like the chicken or the egg theory? Is it like people, people need to um, have realistic expectations? Does that come first? Or is it a self-serving thing to want to have, like, I, I just want this from somebody? I, th I think that we need to. One thing I learned from Kevin Samuels was that I, didn't, I never knew what the point I'm doing all of these things, but I never knew what the point was. I never understood the point of meeting a woman. The point is not, it's not about you. If, if you're meeting a woman to eventually find somebody to marry and have children, you guys are coming together with a common purpose. That matters mm. more than most things. Be happy. Don't just say some, oh, well, this is our jobs. Who gives a fuck if we hate each other? I don't think that's a good scenario. Find somebody you relate with and it, you're happy to be together. But now understand that this is no longer about the two of you. This is about, your, you, you guys are on, on a mission. You're sharing a mission and a goal. Um, and and, and as, a, as, as a single guy who's looking to find somebody to be with, move into that wanting to give to that person. And, and the female has to move into it wanting to give to him. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is we want to take, and I've been one of these people because you're operating from scarcity mm -hmm. and you're operating from a, a place of, of, of uh, be it maybe emptiness or insecurity or feeling incomplete. And, you know, if I, if I get this, this girl who's the head turner, then my value increases all of this surface vanity shit. That's not good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, 
That's, I think that's the, 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 the solution. The solution is to is stop being so selfish and stop being selfless. Mm-hmm. I think if two people can enter a union under that, you know, in that dynamic, with, with those principles, I think you'll see a lot more successful relationships. But it's also got to be on the man's side too. I don't like that there, there's a lot of preaching about what the woman has to do. And then it's this, Talk of that the man can just go and what the fuck kind of shit is that? (laughs) So I I think that um, it's similar. It's being pushed out in the in the media or internet, similar to how like the trans movement is, where it's a very small percentage, but you'd Mm -hmm. think it's so much greater because of how much people, Mm -hmm. how much you're seeing it online. Mm -hmm. Whereas I do know a lot of women personally friends of mine that that don't want all this nonsense they just want a nice guy i'm so glad you said that <laughs> i'm so because that's the other thing people are getting it twisted that the majority of women yeah. are these bitches from only fans that right. are getting invited right. to these podcasts it's bullshit there's so many fucking women that have taken on guys that didn't have their shit together you know how many guys are staying in that woman's apartment you know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to talk about this shit. Everybody's talking about like the, the woman who got to get her shit together, but she got to stop doing this. But nah, bro, there's a lot of fucking good women out there. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of good, obvious, there's, there's, there's good men out there as well. But I, I would go, it was always, it's always been my understanding. Maybe I'm just what I've seen. There's more good women than men. I'm sorry. Like most motherfuckers was out there cheating on their girl and the girl was faithful. Like if you if you don't want to be in a committed relationship, then you can't make the commitment to the person. When you make the commitment to the person, you gotta honor that commitment. You know what I'm saying? Don't get yourself in something you don't want to be in. So I don't know. That's just my perspective. Maybe it's where I'm from. I don't know. No, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of women that are not being spoken for that are really just looking for someone that they can get along with, someone that they can build a family with. Um, and they don't care that they make a certain amount of money. I've even asked them. I was like, the guy that you're looking for, the guy that you're dating, like, um, does it matter to you if he makes six figures or, you know, they're like, no, no, I just want a nice guy that we, we get along and we can like have a kid or something like that. So there's a huge, huge numbers of that happening out there too. That's not being portrayed. And we're just seeing that it's only like, (laughs) it's like, it's like every single woman is on OnlyFans or something like that. Yeah. And people need, and people need to understand when you start looking at these things, you need to understand that these things come with stuff. It's like, look, you want to stay in a nicer room? It, It might come with a bigger bill. You want this girl who's very, you know, she spent a lot of money on her body and this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's, it might not be as pleasant as, as a, of a ride as you would like it to be. You know, and, 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 and the same for the females. You want the, the, the guy with all of this money and he's a big boss and the shot caller and all of this shit. Hey, listen, don't be surprised when <laughs> he's treating you like just one of his objects. I remember um, I, remember I was um, talking to this one girl that I was, we we're planning to like go on a first date. And we talked on the phone a couple of times and I had a feeling about her personality that she was superficial and she was like looking for a guy that had a lot of money or, or something like that. So I was living in Jersey City and she lived in Westchester. So it would have required me to take the Metro North to go see her, mm-hmm. which would take me from, you know, maybe an hour and a half or something like that. So I said to her, because I didn't want to do a dinner date. I wanted to, you know, meet for a coffee or, or a drink um, and just kind of feel it out, see if that she was cool with that. So we were having a conversation on the phone, and I said, um, you know, I think I can come up to you on this day after work. Um, we'll meet over here. And I was thinking that we could meet at this place and, and have a drink. And she goes, and I was like, maybe we'll do dinner another night but we'll go here for a drink. And she goes, yeah, you know, I think that would be okay. But, you know, if we're going to be meeting at seven o'clock, aren't you going to be hungry? And I was like, ah, here comes the manipulation. And we never, and I was just like, no, we're not going to do this. Mm. And some people may think that's, you know. Presumptuous of you? Yeah, but I, I, 
there was definitely you were sensing there was other things. She just wanted not that she only wanted me to buy her dinner, mm. but that was like a requirement that a guy has to take her to a dinner. I don't agree with that. I don't I don't agree like I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. Like exactly. why do I have to like Food, I'd, I'd, I'd rather do that once I know that I enjoy your company. I'll tell you another one. I had a, I got stories for days. Mm. Um, I went out with this girl. We went out in, in Philly into in the fish town. We talked on the phone a couple of times. We agreed. By the way, I always, always have to talk on the phone. You don't just text and meet up. That's just right, like asking right, for trouble. Right, right. We're sitting down and she's like, I'm not really even that hungry. And I kind of agreed, like, personally, I was like, that's fine with me. Like, we could share something. And she's like, yeah, I think that that's good. Like, let's just split something. I'm like, cool. So the waiter comes around. We're looking at the menu. The waiter comes around. She orders. Um, she's like, I'll just order for us. I'm like, okay. Um, she go, She orders an entree for me, an entree for her, and two appetizers for the table. And she gets her margarita drink. If this were now, I, it would be a different outcome, but I, I kind of let it slide. Yeah, you're, you're caught off guard and you're, yeah. The food comes, we eat maybe like 40% of everything. Um, she gets another margarita. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm in fucking for- fucking drinks ring up the bill. I'm in for like 100, 120 bucks or like whatever it was. But as we're finishing up, she um, gets a phone call and she answers the phone while we're sitting across from her. And she had she, it plans. Well, go ahead. She had to go? No, no. Oh, okay. She, um, she answers and it was her friend. She's like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, no, I'm just having dinner right now. Um, but I'm free later. Like, what, what's going on? It, I think it was a girlfriend of hers or something. She's like, oh, but, you know, I'm free later. You know, whatever, while I'm right in front of her. And that might have that might have been planned. Again. So she's like, oh, yeah, you're going here? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll, I'll let you know later. And she hangs up, and she's like, that was my friend. She's like, um, we're going to go to this lounge later in a little bit. You know, maybe you'd like to come. Oh, no, you, you wouldn't like it. You, you probably wouldn't even like it. And to me, I'm just like, well, I, I don't even want to go at this point. And... Um, so that was pretty much like the whole gist of it. And I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And, um, you know, we said goodbye. And then um, I didn't re- respond. I didn't, I didn't um, message her anything else. Uh-huh. I, was, I was done. And like the very next day she says, hey, what's up? How are you? And I never responded to it. And that was the end of it. I wonder if you're, you might be jumping the gun in some of these situations. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> She might have wanted you to push back on the, uh, on the. Oh, you uh, you wouldn't like it, but I, I mean I'm not there, so I don't know. Well, I'll say that I'm a very direct person, mm-hmm. so you're not going to get me to play these games of reading between the lines. Mm-hmm. If someone really likes me, they would say to me, "Would you like to come? You know, I I, I like hanging out with you. I'm having a good time. Do you want to?" you know, come meet my friends over at this place. Yeah, she should be, she should have been like, come, you want to come, like, come with us. Like, yeah, right. it should have been more. Right, it was It was like, I'm doing this. You could come if you want. Nah, you're not going to like it. Oh, oh, okay. It was okay. like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. She kind of like uninvited me almost. Yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, man. Yeah, no, nah, and I don't like the fact, I didn't like that she called up and was like, or just answered the phone he at answered all. The f- yeah, and then like they, that could have been planned to get out of going, feeling like she got to spend the whole night with you or maybe end up going home with you. Sometimes they do that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got to use the bathroom, then send the text, call me in 30 minutes with the bullshit. It's possible. I didn't have any, I, I we were done anyway. And in my mind, we were just going to part ways after the dinner. Yeah. But she might not have known that I was going to, end it or continue asking her out. Who knows what it was, but if it were now, we'd be at the table and she'd be like, I'm not that hungry. I'm like, all right, cool. She starts ordering this and this and this. I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll tell the waiter, come back in a little bit. Yeah. And then be like, 
what, what are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> that's how I would do it now. Right. But back then, I mean, that's how you learn. That's how you learn. Yeah. So. No, she seemed in it. Which to me I, is, is, is sad and pathetic. Sad. You don't got money to go eat all of this for a free meal? It's ridiculous. Like, like chicks are on these dating sites to get free meals. It's like, the fuck is, what are you doing? Yeah. Go buy yourself food. I, I don't know. It's weird to me. Um, using men for meals. It's such a, like you're lowering. And I think the problem too is that meeting people online, and I don't like the metric that people are using. They're using this metric that online dating represents like what's going on between men and women. Um, it doesn't. And I'll tell you why it doesn't. Uh, number one. A lot of the girls on these sites are just girls trying to get guys to sign up to their OnlyFans. Mm. So that's that's affecting the statistic, the metric, right? Because they're, you're look, they're, they're taking the statistic as a whole. They're not accounting for these women that aren't even there for that period. So their lack of action, these OnlyFans girls, they're looking at that as like, you know, they don't swipe to most people or whatever. So that gets counted in. Number two... You got a sausage fest situation in the club. You know, it's, 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 if you have a bunch of men somewhere and then like girls that are, I don't know, sixes, fours and sixes, just look wise, the guy's going to lower his standard because it's better to have something in a room full of <laughs> men than nothing. <laughs> so now the demand of the supply has increased. So now the supply is feeling more valuable. That's what you have on TikTok. I'm not TikTok, Tinder or POF. Furthermore, you have the males that are reaching out to women that they otherwise wouldn't reach out to because they don't have to, you know, muster up the courage to do it in real life. They have to screen to protect them. So you're getting all of these, you know, when I bring up that example to say that if that chick who just ignored your message would have been approached by you in person, it might, it, it, you're approaching her in person is going to impact her differently. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more significant than, than the message that was just sent over line, uh, you know, online. So the, all of these things, these, these things, this all factors in. So when you, when you're not factoring any of these things and you're just going, 81% of women don't swipe, a hundred percent of women, uh, men are swiping. It's like, yeah, because the guy is probably like, that, that, that let's see what responds. Right. Like, so, so I don't think that that's a good metric. I don't think it's a good thing to, um, pursue women in, in that medium. I'm not saying no good can come out of it, but I just think that men need to learn how to muster the courage to, or at least learn to initiate it in a way where you don't feel like you're going up to bat and it's a hit and miss kind of thing. A conversation strikes up, you know, and it's casually like, you know, you ask for the Instagram. Hey, listen, I, what you, you got on Instagram? I'll follow you. I'll keep up with you. It's like, it's not hard. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. There's, if you're only relying on apps to try to meet women, it's, I mean, mo a, a, lot, a lot of girls just don't even take it serious, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, to go to their... Only fans go to their yeah. Snapchat, go to their IG. Mm -hmm. They're looking for followers. They're looking for attention. Mm -hmm. But if you are following that message of like, be the best version of yourself, you're going to look better. You're going to have more confidence. It's going to be easier for you to go up in person. Sure. Right. And then if you have that anxiety, that approach anxiety, that's something you can work on. But working on that is going to deliver way better results than just staying in your comfort zone. And women, and, and honestly, like, I, you know, I can tell you that the insecurity is, yes, the, the body is going to help with it. You build the body. But there are plenty of men that, believe me, like, like the insecurity is something that you have to, to match head on and the courage. You, you can't just build the body and then that goes away. Like, it, it helps. But, you know, there's guys out there that they just got a bunch of motherfucking charm and they're fun to be around and they're funny, whatever they have, their qualities pulling hot chicks, you know? I just think you got to get out there and and uh, don't rely on the computer. Computer's fucked up. Like, the computer dating shit, the online dating shit, it will, it will make you hate females. Yeah. Because it's not a real representation of true human in, in interaction. 
if you if you need any dating coaching, hit us up, thebeeshine at gmail.com. We're going to hook you up. I actually wasn't even thinking along those lines, which I'm glad you did. I mean, this, this is what you always do anyway with since the As I Am series. Mm-hmm. You've always dived, dove into topics on a, on a more deeper underlying way. And um, I always kind of look back and I'm like, yeah, I, I wasn't thinking of it like that. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm a contrarian. So it's like, but, the, but the, the unfortunate thing with that is that it's like, you never, you're always the odd guy. Like, because like now it's popular to like the, the red pill state of mind is popular. Now, like this shit that I'm saying is going to be the shit that like these men are finally just coming into their own and I'm like bursting their bubble and being like, you yeah, know. because you're on to, you're on to the next step ahead yeah. of that. And you're, so you're always going to be in that outcast place. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> right. So when the bubble moves to you, you're like, I'm, no, I'm already, <laughs> yeah, I'm past that. It's unfortunate. Like I'm going to be always forever fucking get with the hate. So it's all right. You could be, but you could, you could kind of take a step back and stay in that place while also talking about the new, I don't know. I don't nah, know. Fuck it. I, it's, it's, it's better to be like, there was a, there was a point where I was like afraid. And then I, and then I realized like, that has no reward in this. And besides like, why, why be like what the followers, if the followers agree there's a fuck. If the followers are there to follow. You got to lead. Like, so you, why, why muzzle myself to make these people, they're just going to jump on the shit I'm saying anyway. It's just going to take a little more time. So fuck it. All good. Well, I appreciate you, man. This is a dope episode. Everybody, thanks for watching. And we're going to see you next time. Peace, motherfuckers.